Do you want to keep your Raspberry Pi up and running and happy? Would you like to avoid potential problems? Well, stay tuned and I'll show you how to do exactly this. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to keep Pi Hole happy and healthy on your Raspberry Pi. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithrunnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button. Thumbs up. Now here's what we're going to be covering in this video, and that's about how to keep your Raspberry Pi with Pi Hole happy and healthy. First, when is it going to be time to update Pi Hole? Then we're going to talk about both a pre and post SD card backup with Raspberry Pi. Then we're talking about updating Pi Hole, and then just as importantly, making sure that all of Raspberry Pi OS is updated while you're doing this. Well, a good question is when is it time to update Pi Hole? And, and that is a good question because in one side, I'm in the camp of it ain't broke, don't fix it. But on the other side of the coin, with the number of increased vulnerabilities that are making it out into the world, and sometimes you will run up against issues in one or more of the binaries or something in Pi Hole itself that may be a problem. In that point, you'll need to update it. But I think probably the easiest way to tell is when you go to Pi Hole, you go down here to the bottom, it says update available. And you may have more than one update. First of all, oh great, I get to reinstall it. Well, you don't have to. And that's the beauty of what we're going to be over is a whole series of things you do all at one setting to where you can make sure you're as reasonably well protected as you can be. A good thing to do on anything such as Pi Hole that's going to be maybe a little involved if the SD card were to get corrupted or failed is to make a backup. I've already done an extensive video on how to back up your SD cards for your Raspberry Pis or anything really that involves a micro SD card, but on the other hand, never hurts to show it to you again because that way you've got everything all in one video. So what I'm going to do is plug in the micro SD card from the Raspberry Pi and you see it says device D, but I always want to check to make sure what it's doing. And at this point it says drive D boot. Okay, so we're reasonably assured. Now I try to keep all my backups in a single directory. And at this point, it doesn't really matter. We're just going to call this RPI Pi Hole. I suggest putting the size of the memory card in here because if you have to restore to a different size SD card, that's an important thing. No, because you're going to need to adjust the card to a larger image, I mean, to a larger drive just to make sure you're not wasting any space or you don't have any of the little gotchas come out. So at this point, that'll be a 16 gigabyte. And then we'll put today's date in there. That way you've got it all in one file size. And we'll say open, even though it's not really opening up. So from reading, we're going to be reading from this device to here. So we will click on read, which will read from the micro SD card in our reader to, and put it out into the image file. And this will take a few minutes to run. And then you'll be set ready to go to go ahead and do all the updates or upgrades to Pi Hole and to the Raspberry Pi itself. Now, again, just to review a few things, make sure that you are doing this when you go to restore, that you are going to restore to a different card just in case there's something that didn't get backed up or maybe is still salvageable that's wanted to be on there. So it's a good thing to always to go to a different card in a situation like this, because then you've still got another layer of backup. Well, no, the folks who created Pi Hole couldn't have made the upgrade process any easier. So it's just Pi Hole dash up. And this will go out and check for any updates that are available. And it sees maybe if you already have something local just to be on the safe side. And see, it tells you right up front that it's got at least two updates that it knows. So it's going to get copies of whatever it needs. 
and then we should be starting here in just a minute. Okay, as you can see, it's got everything all updated. So let's go ahead and switch over here to our Raspberry Pi interface. And voila, before I can even get over there, well, no, it's, it's still showing update available. Of course, well, let's go ahead and we'll refresh the browser. Yep, we've got all the updates reflected now. So couldn't be much easier than that. What we've got to do next is something you should be fairly used to. And if not, this is a something to do periodically on any of your Raspberry Pi devices. And we need to do an update. First, we're going to make sure we've got the latest packages available so that it knows what is current. Then we will do a sudo apt get upgrade. And remember to do the dash Y so that way it's not waiting for you to do an acknowledgement to it before it really gets started. All the updates and upgrades just completed. So just to be on the safe side, we're going to reboot just to make sure everything comes up right. And then we should be good to go. As you can see, we just come back up. Everything appears to be okay. So let's go back over to Raspberry Pi and we'll refresh the screen. It appears to be up and running just fine. Statistics are all there. Everything looks good to go. Now, this is a situation and you don't have to do this last step, but it's kind of brings everything into a complete bundle. You've got a backup before the upgrade and we've got all the upgrades done. I mean, it wouldn't hurt to take a few minutes to do yet another backup just to be on the safe side. So you've got it from exactly just after you did all the upgrades. So if something happens later, then you can, you've got a choice of whether to fall back to before you did all the upgrading or just after you did it. Your call, but to a degree, you can never have too many backups. If you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.